All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Yes, uh, sir. I got six questions for you, then a few would you rathers to have a little fun. And then, uh, yeah, so you want to get underway? Let's do it. All right. So uh, you were a star linebacker and tight end in high school, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you also played basketball, of course. So what made you choose basketball at Bradley instead of playing football? Well, I just always enjoyed playing basketball more. Uh, it became uh, just my passion. I thought I was going to grow more. I thought I was going to be the next Michael Jordan. And so it's, I enjoyed playing the most. And then my mom was afraid that if I played college football that I'd get hurt and not mm -hmm. get my scholarship to finish school. And so that was just a little bit being naive on her part and not understanding really the ins and outs of football. So I just ended up playing basketball because I enjoyed it more. Uh, so at Bradley, you appeared in a couple NIT tournaments and were the, was the power forward on the team. And so while you were at Bradley, uh, what were some of your favorite m moments and games playing there? And did you ever think about like transferring somewhere else to play football or were you sticking with basketball in college? Yeah, I was still with basketball in college because even uh, at a junior college, I would still get recruited to play uh, college football. But that's just stuck with basketball, enjoyed it more. So I never considered transferring, um, not to another school and play another sport because it was a great community for basketball. I had great teammates and several guys from the Atlanta area from kind of where I grew up were there. So it made that transition uh, to Bradley that much smoother for me. And Bradley, of course, you know, it's not the biggest D1 school, but it has had some success. I remember back in like the 70s and 60s, I read they were one of the big powerhouse schools, sort of like Gonzaga is now smaller, but they're really good. Uh, so you got to play in the field house too, which I've seen pictures, it looked outstanding. Uh, so it is like the field house one of your favorite parts about playing for Bradley, or is it just that kind of team? Yeah, I, I think, you know, playing at Bradley, just the atmosphere uh, for it being a great basketball school uh, drew me there. The coach staff was awesome. Um, the education aspect was really good. My mom was excited about that part. But you mentioned the field house. The field house is probably my favorite place to play a basketball game. We didn't get a chance to play very many games in there, but we practiced in there all the time. But the few games that we did play in there, it was like being on a stage because the floor was mm -hmm. raised and then the stands were kind of, that went up. And then the lights were only shined on the court. So it was almost like you were performing on the stage, what made it that much of a cooler atmosphere um, to play a basketball game when it felt like you're on a stage. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that you guys moved that early to the Civic Center. But uh, yeah, I've been to a couple games there. Uh, always love going to Bradley basketball games. That place is cool. I love me and my cousin would go in the upper deck and try to climb it because it was really steep. Uh, we always found that fun. Um, and my dad grew up right across from the field house. I told you this, so mm -hmm. I can't remember it being right there, but I know we have the girls' basketball stadium right there mm -hmm. and the practice facility, so we go over to the rec center when we're visiting there. Yeah. Um, so after Bradley, you were given a tryout for the Colts, and they ended up signing you as an undrafted free agent. So when you were given the tryout, did you think you were going to make the team, and what was your reaction when you found out you did? Yeah, so it was two parts to that. Uh, I thought I was going to make the team, but the head professional scout after my workout told me I don't have a China man's chance of ever making an NFL team. So I was a little bit hurt and deflated. Um, so I went back to Bradley, back to Peoria, and I worked out at River City. It's a gym over there, and I was custodian, and, and so they let me work out there as well. So I went uh, back to the, the Colts uh, and, and then made the team. And it was a, probably one of the most proudest moments uh, when they told me that I was on the roster uh, from playing basketball to, uh, to converting to playing football. So it was probably one of my most proudest moments in my life. So your first few seasons, you had to work your way up. You didn't get much playing time there. And it's sort of like that story where you started off and you know you didn't have too much of a shot. Of course, undrafted free agent. Uh, you know, whenever they make it, it's a big story. And right here, you managed to work your way up to become one of Peyton Manning's top receiving targets. Uh, so how did you manage to climb through the system and pull that off? Yeah, I think at first it was a lot of God-given ability. I don't think it was anything that was special about me. And then I think secondly, had a really good coaching staff. And for me, I was a sponge 
I was going to take every opportunity to make myself better if it's something that I want to do as a career. And was a great coaching staff that I had in my early years to help me develop. And then thirdly, uh, playing with great teammates like Peyton, as you mentioned, you know, it made the game that much easier and simpler for me, especially making that transition from playing, you know, college basketball to playing professional football. So you played for a few teams in your NFL career, but mostly the Colts, and you ended up catching 40 touchdown passes over your career. So that's quite a few, but can you narrow it down to a few of your favorites? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, we were playing the Jets in Indianapolis, and um, I hadn't caught a pass the entire game. And there was um, um, the last few seconds of a two-minute drive at the end of the game, and I scored the winning touchdown. Uh, really had to fight and claw and scratch for those last five yards. And I had a, there was a picture and a, uh, in the paper with a jet for my back, and I was crossing the ball across the goal line, and it said jet lag. And to me, it wasn't just that touchdown, winning touchdown, but that game, my entire family from Alabama happened to take a bus all the way from Alabama to watch that game. And then I actually gave that ball to my mom. So that was probably one of the more proudest moments um, of something that I felt like was not just for me. The team was excited. My mom and my entire family were excited. My wife was there. And so it was a really cool moment. Uh, and that had to be, that's like a perfect end of a story there. Uh, you know, you get the family coming up, that's awesome. And then you get sort of a, you know, uh oh, you're struggling. And then that climax there, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you became a Colts fan favorite. And I, I remember I, when I was researching you, I found an article with a picture of you uh, doing the dunk celebration on the goalpost. <laughs> so now I know where Jimmy Graham got that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you got to play with many great players like Peyton, Ma Peyton Manning. You mentored Dallas Clark, I read. And uh, so the Colts, of course, a very storied franchise. And so you had to have a lot of really fun memories and moments there. Uh, so what were uh, some of those, whether it's on or off the field here? Yeah, um, they were probably more in the locker room because we were a tight knit group and guys really respected one another, enjoyed each other's company. So my, more of my memories came from, you know, practical jokes in the locker room. You know, we used to have this little basketball hoop that was hung over one of the lockers with a Nerf ball. And we played basketball in the locker room. Or uh, I remember one time Edwin lost a bet and it was like 1200 bucks, and he paid this guy in all pennies. <laughs> just stuff like that is more of my fondest memories, you know, in the locker room. That's one of the things that I miss the most. The playing was exciting. The making money was exciting. But to me, the thing I miss the most, even now, is those moments in the locker room. And so you, I read, I read something you've compared yourself to Forrest Gump here. Your life is Forrest <laughs> Gump. And so life after football has been pretty crazy for you. You competed in the amazing race. And now, uh, as we can see from your shirt, you have a job with the Jaguars. Uh, so what has life after football looked like for you? And you now got kids. I know Micah, he's getting all these crazy offers to go play college football places. And your daughter also on Bartram's uh, girls basketball team. So what have been some of your favorite things about life after, life after football? And can you kind of explain what you're doing with the Jaguars now? Yeah, life after football uh, was not what I expected. Uh, in my mind, I wanted to get into coaching. And I coached high school football for about four years back in my hometown. And that's how I ended up working for the Jags. And I'm currently a director of player engagement. And my job is kind of like a life coach. I help our guys through experiences of my own to help them prepare to being professionals on the front end because a lot of time young young rookies don't understand what the business of professional football is about. So I get an opportunity to teach them about relationships, about money, teach them about doing things the right way. And that's the gratifying part for me when it comes to my job now. But, you know, as you mentioned, you know, I have a daughter that's, you know, playing at Bartram Trail. She's a pretty good basketball player, excited about her future. And you mentioned Micah um, playing football and getting all these crazy offers and so for my life you know after football I think coaching them has been a joy for me uh, to get an opportunity to help them with a jump shot or talk to Mike about pass rush or what the expectations are on the next level you know those are exciting moments for me not just as a dad but someone that's implementing what they could achieve in the future 
And I, I, another thing I read, one day you spent 12 hours in the gym with them playing basketball. <laughs> and uh, so we're getting a little bit to know you about uh, life off the field here, but uh, I got a few really important questions, most important of the interview, and that's some would you rathers. Okay. Um, so would you, so I think you answered this early on, but this is what I have down. Uh, would you rather play basketball or football? I would still rather play basketball. Uh, cause I just enjoyed it more. Uh, I see myself, you know, playing in the NBA and, uh, I just think it'll be a lot more fun, uh, playing, you know, basketball at this time of year in the NBA. And a follow up question to that. We got March Madness going here. Who's your pick to win it all? Well, I did my bracket this morning and, uh, I picked Gonzaga versus Alabama. Alabama. Uh, finals. And I, I went with Gonzaga. I think they're going to go all the way without losing a game. Yeah, and I, I had Gonzaga winning it over Baylor, but I got Texas and Oklahoma State in my Final Four. Yeah, um, I got Oklahoma State in my Final Four as well. So this is one of my, uh, this is kind of my would you rather question I ask everyone here. And that is, would you rather eat Italian or Mexican food? <laughs> that is a great question, Mr. Noah. Um, I would rather have Italian. I'd yes, I'm with you there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a big spice guy, so the Mexican, that kind of changes things. Yeah, same um, for me. I'm not a big spice guy. I'd rather have some lasagna and salad. And then this, taco. this is a big debate in my house. My dad's on uh, the mountainside. My mom's on the beach side. So would you rather go to the beach or the mountains? Ooh, Mr. Noah, you're asking some tough questions, brother. Um, that's a tough one. I'd probably say the mountainside. Because I'm, a, I'm an avid outdoorsman. I like fishing, hunting. And if there's a golf course in the mountains, then it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I got to see uh, the Players' Championship. That was my first PGA Tour event. That was amazing. And then I got to talk some sports with Brent Martin on the show. And uh, so, perfect day there at the Players. Yeah. Um, well, I thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I know uh, you're heading down to Orlando, as you said. So, I won't uh, take up any more of your time. But thank you so much. I had a blast. Thank you, brother. Congratulations. The rest of the way on the show. Thank you.